Okay, welcome back to video three, part three of this series of sending ESP8266 or ESP32 IoT data through API Gateway, processed with Lambda, and dispatched to S3. And then in the next lecture, video four, we'll talk about creating a web host so we can visualize our IoT data sent from our embedded device. So in this video, I want to go over our Arduino sketch that'll dispatch our data via REST HTTP to API Gateway. So this is the sketch that I'm basing everything on. This sketch I think was made originally like 2015 or the last commit was 2018, but this guy is the main software developer over at Espressive, which makes the ESP8266 and the ESP32. And what's so cool about what this guy did in Russia is that he was just programming on his own time, made a complete board manager hardware abstraction layer software library for the ESP8266 to be compatible with the Arduino so by doing that, you basically had an Arduino board that had onboard Wi-Fi that was cheaper than the Arduino without a shield. So overnight, it pretty much put Arduino hardware out of business. So that's the real interesting thing that Ivan did. And it was so good, the end of the story is Espressif made him three different offers to head their software engineering if he would move from Russia to China. And I think by the third offer, he said, fine, I'll do all of your software and head your whole software department. So now he's in Shanghai, China. But this is the REST HTTP sketch, unlike the MQTT sketch that I used throughout the course. And I'll be using a modified version of this sketch. And I'll provide you a link to this. Okay, I don't care if my Gmail is out of sketch and I'll pay my Portland art tax later. All right, so let's go over to my sketch. I have this on my GitHub repository. I'm just going to go ahead and select everything on this and paste this into my Arduino IDE. And I'll show you everything that you need to change. So come over here to your Arduino IDE. I assume you have this installed and you have your board manager and software libraries for your ESP32 or ESP8266 device. I'll be doing this for the ESP8266. If you're using the ESP32, I'll have a sketch for that, and it's a much easier sketch because you don't need the SHA-256, the SHA-256 security because the ESP32 has a bunch of security protocols built in, including Wi-Fi secure that you don't have to alter, unlike this Wi-Fi client secure that you need to alter here for your ESP8266 sketch. So go ahead and grab this sketch. I'll provide you a link. You're going to need to fill in your Wi-Fi network and your Wi-Fi network password. Obviously, you've probably done that before for any IoT sketch you've used. Important thing to note that my students often mess up with is your Wi-Fi network needs to be your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network, not your 5G. The ESP devices are still only 2.4 gigahertz enabled on their antennas and their protocols. So make sure that you're on a 2.4 gigahertz network. Put in your network and your password. And then the next thing you're going to need to put in is your API gateway endpoint. Where do you get that? Well, it's over here, obviously, where we have our API gateway on our deployment. So I'm going to go to API gateway, go to stages, go to my deployment where I have my API gateway key enabled. And I want to copy this whole thing without the HTTPS part. So I'll go ahead and copy the whole thing, but I'm going to show you why it's important. You don't add to the HTTPS part of this script as I have it. So I'm going to put it all in here, copy and paste it in here. And then I don't want this last slash. I'm going to cut out this deployment B and I'm going to add that to the string URL at the next line. So you don't want the deployment in there. You're going to add your deployment right here. So your deployment goes there. My API key secured deployments deployment B. And then the last thing is for this, I don't want this HTTPS colon slash slash. So get rid of that. So now I just have my deployment here with my region and my deployment down here in the string. Okay, awesome. So you have your network, your network ID, your host, and your deployment. Now, the last thing you're going to have to do is you're going to need your SHA ID. Where do you get that? Well, I put in a little thing how to get it from Chrome, but I'll walk through how to get this. So I'm going to go back here to Chrome. And the page you want to start off with is this page. I'm going to take this URL address. I'm just going to click it on. Now, this is the page with that API key secured 
that I need to get that SHA-1 thumbprint. I called it fingerprint, Google Chrome calls it thumbprint, it's the same thing. Anyways, how we're gonna do this here is come to the breadcrumbs over here, click that on, I'm gonna go to more tools, then I'm gonna go to developer tools. And then from this screen, I'm gonna make sure that security tab is highlighted, and I'm gonna hit view certificate. And under view certificate here, I want the details, that's the details tab. I'm gonna scroll down to the very last selection where it says thumbprint, click that on, copy my alphanumeric thumbprint, control C, and now I'm gonna paste that into my Arduino sketch and go from there and paste it right over here. But before I can paste it in, this is a different deployment, so don't worry about that. That's why this has a different deployment number. But I need to separate every two alphanumerics by a space. So go manually through here and separate every alphanumeric by space. You'll do that for the whole thing. Then once you have that done, copy the whole thing and make sure it's separated as I've done here. So I'll assume this is the right one, even though it's not. Copy this and now where it says fingerprint array program memory, I'm going to paste it in here. And that's how it needs to be. Now I'm good to go. But there's one more thing I have to add and that's my API key. And I can just stick it here. It's a good spot to stick it here. Control paste. This constant char pointer API key. And now I simply have to put my API key that's specific for that deployment right here. So where do I grab that? I come over here. I'm going to go ahead to API keys and just make sure I get the API key that's relevant to that deployment. In this case, this is it right here. Show it. And I'm going to copy it. That's the one we created in the previous lecture. Make sure you're grabbing that API key that you created in the previous lecture. Awesome, come back to your sketch and you can paste your API key right here. Go ahead and paste that in and it didn't paste correctly so I'm gonna make sure it's in the quotes here. So I'm just gonna come back over here and that's correct. And so here's where it gets dispatched via REST is if I scroll down here in my sketch to this section, client print from an instantiated HTTP client object. I'm going to use temperature and humidity with two random variables. You can see where I just generate a random number for temperature and a random integer for humidity, or you can generate a random float. It won't overload your payload, whichever way you do it. And then I'm going to have an extra field in here. So your sketch will have this. And this is already, I have a macro for it. Remember that API key macro up top I just did? So you don't need to mess with this at all. I'm just trying to show you how this works. Again, this is not case specific. You can have any match of lowercase or uppercase letters. It doesn't matter. X API key. And it'll grab the constant char that I have up there on the top of my script. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this with my specific data show you what your output serial monitor window should look like, and then make sure it's actually filling our S3 bucket. So I'll pause the video, go ahead and compile and run your sketch, and then I'll run mine and we'll see it filling the bucket. So let me pause this and come right back because it's going to take like 30 seconds to fill this out and run my sketch. So I'll be right back. Okay, it finished compiling there. I'm just going to open my serial window. It's looking for Wi-Fi. I'm going to leash it to my phone. Okay, it's connecting. I can see from my phone it got leashed. It's sending the request, and we're going to want that invalid response header. Again, because we don't have a response programmed in, like in 200 code or something in our Lambda or API gateway that it's responding to. But we want this internal server error. That was the correct response. We don't want forbidden. If you get forbidden, it means your API key isn't working. So let's go back to S3 and look at what kind of payload we have. So I'll come over here, and this is my bucket in US East 2. And it should be filling up right now. So let's go check that out. So here it is. It says my latest bucket is 1532. And when I refresh this, I have new readings in here. I'll wait for one new reading. This is saying 10, 18, 39. This is still sending from my ESP8266 device. Okay, let's go ahead and look what this new packet looked like. Now remember, it's not going to send that whole data blob over. It's only going to pick out the event.query string parameters. Because remember, 
for testing from API Gateway or Lambda, I can send either the event or the whole thing over. When I'm sending it from Arduino or API Gateway, I don't want all that additional information added by API Gateway. So go ahead and download this and you'll see that query string parameters has pulled just the relevant information out. So this is what yours should look like. Open this latest data object. And indeed, I only have humidity, temperature. Again, these are both randomly generated data and I have uptime. Uptime will just keep going up as long as this keeps running. So that's pretty much it. This whole bucket's gonna fill and then that's pretty much it for this video. And then in the next video, I'll go ahead and create a static web host. I'll open up this data bucket to make it public and then my static web host can extract data directly out of this bucket for visualization. So let's go ahead and do that in the next lecture.